Okay, I normally don't do this kind of stuff, but I watched this video today that made my head want to freaking explode. So I had to come out and say something. It was by this guy that calls himself Dan Professor Dungeon Master DeFazio. He's given himself the title professor. Okay, cool. Awesome. Good for you. We're going to talk about data, and we're going to talk about how you look at data and draw a conclusion. I understand I don't have a fancy title like Professor Dungeon Master. I am Dr. Imholt. Not doctor of medicine, doctor of physics. I'm an experimental scientist. I look at data, draw conclusions for a living, and I happen to work in the startup space now, so I kind of deal with businesses on a regular basis. He comes out, he seems giddy for some reason that dungeon that uh, uh, TTRPG sales are down. He just kind of seems sort of happy about it, and he seems all pleased with himself. In fact, if you want to look at the cover of his most recent video, I took a screenshot of it. There it is. He seems so happy about the whole thing, which kind of drives me nuts in a little bit in, in, in a few ways. More about that in a second. But first he comes out and he's kind of right. He says, look, well, sales are slipping because we had the COVID pandemic and, and there was no episode. There's no new episodes of Stranger Things. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, sales are down after sales had a massive increase during the pandemic because people started playing again and they hadn't for a long time. Some people have been out of the hobby for a long time. They went jump back in. They had a lot of time on their hands. I started playing with virtual tabletops, which he seems to hate, but somehow have actually brought people back together to play the game again. Virtual tabletops, I think, are a good thing. If you can play a person, great. If you can't play a person, they solve that problem for you. Fantastic. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, well, there's no new episodes of Stranger Things. And I guess when Stranger Things happens, people buy it for nostalgic reasons. Hey, genius. I have teenagers in the house. They see people playing on Stranger Things. They get interested in it. They want to try it out. I've been trying to get them to do it forever. They watch Stranger Things. All of a sudden, they want to play the fucking game. I don't know. Maybe that might be why sales go up a little bit. Maybe it's not for nostalgia reasons because the guys that have been playing forever and maybe took a long break have all the stuff sitting on a shelf. We're not running out and buying new stuff because we bought it all years ago. He seems sort of confused on why these things might sort of cause increases. And for a professor, you would kind of think that you wouldn't have that problem. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. And then he starts talking about, well, handheld games. No, he's talking about phone apps. This is not 1980. We're not buying little Casio sports things. They're, they're apps, okay? They're not handheld games. Well, they are because they're on your phone. So I guess technically he's right. But he sort of makes this weird conclusion like, well, there's all these handheld games coming out. Yeah, was, he's talking about apps. And what he's worried about seems sort of mystified that this might happen. And he seems concerned that, um, and then he comes on to say, well, I'm not really, I don't say it's a bad thing, but he seemed concerned the whole time. And then he tried to cover it. So let's, let's talk about what the hell he was talking about. What he's talking about was he thinks that uh, the, uh, there, there's going to be a, a wizards of the coast, coast thing where they go off and make an, an app for your phone, where you can play dungeons and dragons light or, or dungeons and dragons go comparing it to monopoly go. Well, why might won't the company want to do that? Well, number one, I think it'd be kind of cool. I'm sitting around waiting for my kids, different places. It'd be kind of neat to play a little dungeons and dragons on my phone. It gives me a little sort of something to do. Okay, great. But let's talk about why he thinks that might happen. Well, monopoly go is something Hasbro put out. And they brought in $2 billion in revenue after just 10 months of launch of this game. And he's like, well, gee, you know, if I could do that, and I'd just shut down making books. Hey, genius, you can make books and apps. If you haven't noticed, Hasbro still makes Monopoly sets, and they also make Monopoly Go. You can do both. That exists on the planet we live in. And let's think about something else for a second. Yes, $2 billion in 10 months. That's awesome for a company losing money. If they could bring in new revenue using their existing IP, I say do it. That way they dig themselves out of the hole they're in. And he thinks, oh, gee, if we can make $2 billion. And he sort of alludes to the fact that they're just going to go magically make $2 billion with Dungeons and Dragons in an app, which I think would be fantastic. But let's look at this for a second. Something else he's not telling you because he doesn't really like to look at facts. He seems to like just look at an article. Oh, I read this blog. I'm going to talk about it. But let's not fasten it. Let's not, you know, sort of look at a blog as fact. Let's actually look up a few things. Look at some data before you draw a conclusion, professor. And here's the problem. And I'm not saying it's a problem. Here's the difference. Monopoly sells 3.4 million physical copies a year. 3.4 million. Keep that number in mind. It has a large player base. It has a lot of people who play it. A lot of families get together. Kids get together. Teenagers still play the thing. Mine still play that thing. 5e, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, has sold a grand total, I looked it up, 1.6 million copies total. 1.6 million copies total, 3.4 million physical copies a year. 
one of those is going to bring in a lot more money than the other. And I think if you can bring additional eyes into the Dungeons and Dragons world and get people to look at it and maybe play it, I think that's a good thing. And do you think, Professor, if you're so good at putting all this crap together, that having an app that lets kids play on their phone a game they've only ever heard of might get them interested and have them show up at a table to go play the game? Did you possibly come up with that thought, Professor? Next time you go sit on a panel somewhere, maybe you should pull your head out of your butt and think about facts when you start trying to go off and get all giddy that, you know, sales are down. Multimedia prospects of things actually kind of work in the real world. Maybe you should look at a few things besides blogs. Everybody have a great day.